Welcome to episode 5 of Copa America previews. We have already done group A, so if you want to go check out the previews for group A, they're on the Copa America playlist on the channel. Today's episode is all about the nation that have a very exciting young generation emerging, and that is Ecuador. But Ecuador have been major underachievers in Copa America history. Can the fortunes change for this nation, and can they finally deliver at the Copa America? And remember to download SofaScore, you can keep up with everything Ecuadorian football on SofaScore Independiente. You can keep up with Liga de Quito, Barcelona, MLE. Link to the app is in the description down below. But further ado, let's get to the preview of La Tri. When I show you this right here, and this is previous performances by Ecuador at the Copa America, it ain't great. They are probably the biggest underachievers. Even Venezuela, even Vina Tinto have made it to a semifinal outside of hosting it. And that was in 2011. The only time Ecuador have been in fourth place is when they have hosted the Copa America. So now this nation that have a lot of great players up and coming, you know, for qualifying to the World Cup in 2002, 2006, 2014, and they didn't even get to the quarterfinal. And right now, Ecuador are the biggest underachievers. They are. Peru have made it to a Copa America final this century. Paraguay, even Bolivia made it to a final in 1997. Even though, yes, altitude tax, we can say that. So Ecuador... This is your time now. Yeah, okay, we can, we're can. we going to talk about the players and the manager and everything that's going around with the federation. They have to start now performing. It's not like, oh, cute Ecuador. Oh, beautiful. Iquito is a wonderful place. And I've been to Ecuador. It's a beautiful place. This is now time where shut up and perform. Don't go to strip clubs. <laughs> Gonzalo Plata. Do not go to strip clubs. Even though... Uh, they're going to Vegas, so that ain't a great thing. Kendry? We're going to talk about Kendry in a minute. Based on the history, you wouldn't back on Ecuador performing well at this Copa America. You wouldn't. Because of the history of this nation when it comes to major competitions. They made it to round of 16 in the World Cup in 2006. They've obviously made it to quarterfinals in the last two of the three Copa Americas. Based on the talent they have right now, expectations are a semifinal. But talent can only get you so far. As we have seen now with recent results. It's funny, for all like the negative comments I've kind of had about Ecuador during Conobo World Cup qualifiers. They've only lost two games since 2023. Only two games. Argentina away, 1-0, Messi ridiculous free kick, and the latest game back in, uh, was it New Jersey? Yeah, it was New Jersey, New York Red Bull Arena. 2-0 loss to Italy, even though Italy scored a screamer like the first five minutes thanks to Pellegrini. But one thing you can kind of see with these results is they are lacking goal scores. There is no fluidity with this team. Under Gustavo Alvaro, they were playing beautiful football and it, they were destroying Colombia 6-1. They were having some fantastic moments. And then Felix Sanchez. And yes, they are very defensively good. And I, that's one thing I really want to highlight in this video is Ecuador are a defensively solid team. It kind of reminds me of Paraguay in 2011. Very good team under Marcelo Bielsa. They were playing a very good football, but they didn't allow a lot of goals and they didn't score a lot of goals. Remember, Paraguay... Didn't win a single game in the 2011 Copa America and made it to the final. Could we see a similar thing here for Ecuador? Wouldn't be shocked. I would not be shocked about it. So yes, we can heavily criticize this team, heavily criticize the manager. I think they've done well with the results. They have. But this guy right here. This guy right here. Felix Sanchez. I do not rate one bit. And when they hired him. I said, this is not going to be a good hiring. Because I saw with Qatar that he just changed. They were playing great football, Qatar, when they won the Asian Cup in 2019. Then he moved to a back five, and they had no continuity, no fluidity. And we saw what happened at the World Cup. They were the worst hosts ever. And I think that was kind of down to Felix Sanchez's tactics. He went away from what was good, and it really derailed him. Now he landed, I think, one of the best jobs in South America. Because Ecuador have the talent, and there's more talent and more talent. But he's not the right guy. That's just my opinion from the outside looking in. And you can say, Michael, look at the results. They're not the worst of results. I fully agree. Watching some of those games, Ecuador were not good. There was no fluidity in the attack. Defensively, they look solid. Midfield, they look good. But you got to score some goals, please. I Give me something. <laughs> It cannot be the Saharan Desert with the attack. You have to coach as well. You can't only just rely on individual talent. Yes, there's individual talent on this team. 
Felix Sanchez, coach. Felix Sanchez's tactics. I think he's one of those guys. He goes to the Banos in Ecuador. And he's one of those party buses. Oh, he's partying all night. It's a fiesta. It's wonderful. He's drinking everything wonderful. And then he's got a massive chuchaki. If you don't know what chuchaki is, search it up. Ecuadorians will know. And then he wakes up and he's looking at the tactics board. He's like, let me put back four. Oh, no, no, wait. Back five. No, 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 no. no. Oh, minuto. No, back four. Brother, stick to one formation and one style of play and build some... Con you don't have a whole season like a club football team does. You don't. This is international football. You have to build camaraderie you have to build chemistry so going from a back four to a back five to a back four to a back five it's not gonna work like that and i think he's sort of confused on how do i get the best out of these players and what formation will we succeed in but he's under the hot seat there's no doubt about it he's got to perform at this copa america if he goes out of the group stage i would say adios if he gets out of the group stage then you can build something with him but he has to now prove why the federation hired him it's now or never, in my opinion. This is only my opinion, people. You let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Is Felix Sanchez on the hot seat with this Copa America? The one thing going for Ecuador is they got ballers. And one of those ballers is, of course, Moises Caicedo, who has been under a lot of pressure this season. He is the most expensive transfer in Premier League history. So there is going to be eyeballs on him, but I think it's unfair. He hasn't even reached his prime yet. He's not 25, 26, 27, where he's had a lot of experience in football. The guy is still 22. So he's been scrutinized so much when I see social media and I see punish like, oh my God, Moises Caicedo, he hasn't lived up to expectation. That's Chelsea's fault. Chelsea paid a ridiculous amount of money and we've seen with their transfer strategy. It's bozo-esque. Yes, Moises Caicedo hasn't reached to the full potential level that maybe we were expecting. But with the Ecuador national team, he knows his role. Destroyer, great passer of the ball, and progresses with the ball wonderfully. When I watch Caicedo play for Ecuador compared to Chelsea, it's two completely different players. I, honestly, it really is. You have to just watch. If, you're, if you don't watch Ecuador and you just watch Moises Caicedo, he is by far, in my opinion, the most influential player on this team. Because he is the glue. If he's not playing well, this team is not functioning. If he plays well, then everybody is eating well. They're eating a bunch of churrascos. They're, they're eating wonderfully. So Caicedo, this is now going to be a major competition for him. We saw what he did at the World Cup. He scored against Senegal, which could have been the goal that progressed Ecuador to the round of 16. And then Koulibaly said, yeah, not on my watch. Caicedo, I'm really excited to see what he can do. Because maybe people will watch him at the Copa America and say, there is a player there. And he can be one of the best midfielders in the world. We haven't seen that Chelsea yet, but the Copa America, this kid can definitely shine. The great part with this Ecuador team is defensively, these guys are rock solid. And what do I have these two players? Well, it's William Pacho and Hincapié. I think these two are the two best defenders. You know, we can talk about Felix Torres, who's gotten some critical goals. Esto Pignan, even though he's injured right now, we'll see if he's going to be fit enough for the Copa America. He's very vital down that left side. And then obviously Preciado down the right side. But Hincapié... Very good pass to the ball. I don't think he's the greatest defensively, and he's quite rash. Bacho, I mean, this guy is beast mode. And as a Liverpool fan, and now seeing the links between Bacho and Liverpool, I'm saying, get him. Because I seen him play against Uruguay. I thought he was amazing. Seen him play with Frankfurt. I think he's great. Bacho, this guy is a beast. Beast mode. How do you actually say beast mode in Spanish? I actually don't know. You guys gotta let me know, because that is Bacho. He is beast mode. This is the strong suit of this Ecuadorian team. These two guys and Felix Torres are the glue. They're going to have to have incredible Copa Americas for Ecuador to go far, like a semifinals final. Like, like, let's talk crazy. If Ecuador go far in this tournament, it's because of the defenders that they have, and they are absolute quality. Pacho Hincapié could start for most teams in South America. They could start for Colombia. They could start for Peru. They could start for Chile. They could start for Venezuela, Paraguay. And the fact that they're both playing for Ecuador just speaks volume to the generation that now is emerging with Ecuador. So keep an eye on these two and especially William Pacho. There's only one player to talk about on this Ecuadorian team and that is the sensation Kendri Pais. Give me a second. I got the wrong kid on. Well, there we go, people. Independiente. They're flourishing everywhere in Ecuadorian football and their club has produced this baller. 
as they have produced Moises Caicedo, they have produced so many other, like Independiente are one of the best academies in all of South America. They are, but this kid right here might be the best they have produced in the club's history. Because Kendri Pais, if you have not watched him, and I, I strongly recommend watching some highlights of this kid at 16 years old is going to be insane. We already know he signed the Chelsea, even though I don't really think it's the right move. Maybe it would have been better to go to Spain. Maybe it would be better for his style of game. There is no doubt this kid is one of the most talented footballers in recent memory in South America. Yes, we can talk about Endrick. You can talk about Echeverri from Argentina. You can talk about, obviously, Esteval from Brazil, from Palmeiras. Kendri Pais is sensational. Look at what he's doing in the Copa Libertadores against grown men. Grown men. This guy is embarrassing them and adopting them. He's adopting them. I don't know how many times I've said it on Twitter, social media, YouTube. Kendri Pais is going to be one of the best players in the world. But he needs to act right like a professional. Brother, hermano, do not go to strip clubs. I mean, yeah, you can blame Gonzalo Plata and everything like that. Kendri, you got to be smart. And they're playing in Vegas? <laughs> That's a recipe for disaster. So hopefully Kendri, because no doubt this guy is so talented. He's He's got all the ability in the world to be one of the best players in the world. Use your brain, buddy. Please. But what's his role with this team? Creative engine. Goal scoring, as we have seen. He's gotten two or three assists in the World Cup qualifiers. Just shows you. Even though he might be 16, like similar to Laminia Mall, Kendri Pais just seems like it's natural to him. It's natural to just play like this, play with a little bit of arrogance, play with this beautifulness that we see and the touches, everything about this kid just screams he's going to have a big Copa America. And I hope he does because then the eyes will really, because now we just see a little bit, and I think it's mostly Chelsea fans hyping him up because they signed him and obviously Ecuadorians. This Copa America, he's going to show to the world what this kid is about. So Kendri Pais, he is. The El Diamante de Ecuador. He is the diamond. So let's see how Kendri is going to do at this Copa America. So let's get to tactics. Or shall I say lack of tactics when it comes to Felix Sanchez. As you see, he has been going through all sorts of players. Trying all sorts of formations. What is the best formation for this national team? I think the best formation is the one on the top. Where you have Felix Torres. You have William Pacho. Hincapié. Three center backs. Then you got Preciado on one side. And you got Estupinal on the other side. Where there's going to be a conundrum is... Who's going to play as the two strikers? Because you have obviously Sarmiento. You have obviously Ender Valencia. Even though Ender Valencia recently has not been on form. And then you obviously have Kevin Rodriguez from Royal Union St. Joao. And then you have Yeboa. You have a lot of good players. There is so much talent on this team. Please, Felix Sanchez, get it right. And who do you pair next to Moises Caicedo in the midfield? I think you have to have Kendri in the number 10 role. Just let him do what he wants. He's an old school number 10. Let Kendri dictate. Let him create. Moises, you're going to be destroyer. And I don't know who to pair next to Moises. I think that's the sort of conundrum. They have all this talent on the field, but they're lacking another midfielder. So, Ecuadorians, I want to know, who would you pair next to Moises Caicedo in the midfield? And I would think you have to go with the experience of Ener Valencia. You just have to. Even though he might not be in the greatest form, major competitions, he shows up. He, he, somehow, he might not be in the greatest form club level. Major competitions, he's similar to Ochoa. They just shine. They shine. And Kevin Rodriguez, I, I do like the player. I think he can be a good influential piece to this Ecuadorian team. I don't think the back four really works with this side. Because, you know, Estupinian and Preciado, even though they love to go forward and they're both really good on the, on the ball, defensively, I don't think they're the strongest. And that would then hurt this team a lot. They can do that against El Salvador, Guatemala. They cannot do that in the Copa America. They simply can't. So, back five. Roll with that. The goal scoring has been the major issue for this team. If they can keep it low scoring, 1-0, 1-1, Ecuador can go far in this tournament. But will the lack of goals hurt this team? So I want to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Who would be their two players up front? And would you go with the back five formation? Basically play a 5-2-1-2 where you have the two midfielders, Kendri in the 10, and then the two strikers. But I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. How would you set up with this national team? And finally... My prediction for Ecuador. How far are they going to go in this tournament? If we go strictly by talent, it should be semifinals, quarterfinals. It should be. Based on the... They have one of the most talented teams. But the issue with football and every sport, it's not based on talent. It's what you see on the field. 
And what you've seen on the field recently is, yes, a very difficult team to break down. And that actually can favor them a lot in major competitions. You don't really need to be a high-scoring team playing wonderful Jogo Bonito football. You just need to get the job done. And Ecuador can do that. They can just do nil-nil, nil-nil, one-nil in the group stage. And they'll be perfectly fine. And then knockouts, anything can happen. I think the ceiling for this team is quarterfinal. Because you have to take into account the history of Ecuador and Copa America. It's not great. If they make it to a semifinal, that'll be historic. And then Felix Sanchez, even though I don't rate the guy, he's going to stay for a while then. He will. But my prediction, I think it's quarterfinal max. This group is the group of life. Any of these four teams can progress. Any of these four teams can progress. So it's going to be highly difficult for Ecuador. But they have definitely the talent to make it out. And they need to prove it. Some of their players have played in major competitions. Like Caicedo, like Hincapié, Estupiñan, Preciado, all of those guys. They need to now perform at a major competition. Will it be at the Copa America this summer? You let me know your thoughts. How far do you think Ecuador are going to go at this Copa America? So thank you all for watching. There is the preview and prediction of Ecuador at the Copa America for this summer. A very exciting generation. But will the player quality match on the field? Only time will tell, and I'm hope I'm wrong about Felix Sanchez, but I have a bad feeling about him. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for new round here, as we are previewing every nation for the Copa America. And next up is Vina Tinto, Venezuela. Have a beautiful day, stay safe in this crazy world, and until next time, adios. Explain something.